Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Today we're going to take a look at a really cool toolpath called Advanced Drill. This toolpath will essentially let you longhand out a drill toolpath right inside of Mastercam. So let's go ahead and take a look. So on my screen here, I have a casting part. And the first section obviously has some material that I'm going to have to drill through. The next section down is air. The third section has material, the fourth section is air, and then my final section is material. So what I really want to do is I want to drill through my first section, drill through faster through that air section so I don't waste time, and then drill at the same rate as the first section through the second and third. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So in my tool pass, if I hit my drop down on 2D tool pass, there's one called advanced drill in here. If we go to advanced drill, you're going to get right into your toolpath hole definition as you're used to. In this page here, all we need to do is go and select where we want these uh, advanced drill toolpaths to be applied. In this case, I picked the top center of the first hole. I'm going to go ahead and green check out of here. And as far as our parameters go for advanced drill, a lot of these will look exactly the same as you're used to in Mastercam. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my tool. This is a 118 thousandths diameter uh, drill. In the cut parameters page, this is where it really changes around. So our first section here is going to be our segments of our custom drill cycle. So in this case here, if I count my segments here, I got one, two, three, four, and five. So the easiest thing that I have found in this case is to go ahead and get my five sections there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this four times and you'll notice that it populates these. If I wanna get rid of one, I can obviously hit the red X here. And now this is as easy as just filling out some information right off my screen. So a simple left click into these boxes here will allow me to pick right off my screen. So in this case, my first depth, I'm gonna right click in the box and go to Z coordinate of a point. And I'm going to go ahead and pick any wireframe on the bottom side of that first segment. And you'll notice it puts in a negative 200 thousandths. I'm gonna to go to my next segment here and I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go Z corner of point and pick any of this top stuff here, which you'll see populated a negative 0.3875. I'm gonna to go to my next segment here, right click, Z corner of a point and go to the bottom section there. And I'm gonna to go to my next one here, Z corner of a point and pick the top. Now I notice that I'm gonna need one more. No problem, I can just easily add that with a plus symbol and you'll notice that I get another section here. So I'm gonna go back to this one. I'm gonna to go to Z corner of a point back to the top and the final one here I will fix up to go to the bottom of the part. In my final section in there's gonna be retract. That's just gonna retract back to where I started all the way to the top. As far as uh, order of operations like I did here, this is just personal preference. I like to put all my depths in and then I go and fill in my other information accordingly. Now I could also come in here and if I want maybe five inches, I can type in five inches for a feed rate. Now my second segment is in air essentially, so I'm gonna go to 500 inches a minute on that one. Next segment here is five inches again, back to 500 and my last one would be five inches. And as you can see, whatever you type in here is going to be output in our code. Same with spindle direction, RPM value would be the same thing. Maybe I want 1500 RPM. And in this case here, in this example, these are all going to be the same. So, you know, I don't have to worry about changing any speeds in this case, but if you did have a situation where you wanted to change a spindle speed, you easily could here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make these all the same. And I'm gonna put the last one at zero potentially to stop my spindle when it retracts out. Same with coolant, you're gonna have all of your coolant options that are built into your machine, and you will also have a dwell value. In this case, I don't want any coolant and I'm not going to dwell, but you would have that say. Now I have all my sections built. We're gonna get down to the bottom section here. We do have tip compensation. So tip compensation accounts for the tip of your drill so you don't have to do any math. So if I wanted to pop that through, I could turn this on possibly in my first section here. So if I go to tip compensation, I could say go through zero, which would just stick the tip straight through. If I wanted an additional amount, I'd put a positive value in there. So in this case, my first section, I'm going to have my tip comp on. My second one, 
As you'll notice, my tip compensation no longer is on because these are all individual sets here. I'm going to leave that one off. My third one, I'll turn tip on. Fourth one off. And my last one, tip compensation. So now this will force that tip through so I don't have no issues with colliding with any additional material in there. Um, other options we have in here for each segment, once again, these sets are all for individual segments. I have full segment, um, which would be uh, like a G83 cycle and a can cycle. And so it's, a, it's going to retract all the way out, come back in. Chip brake is just a micro lift, so it breaks the chip, doesn't come out of the hole. And then top of stock. Top of stock will force your tool to the back all the way to the top of stock that we have set in the linking parameters or if we use the stock option above the cup parameters page. So if you wanted any of these, you could easily get that out just by selecting them for the individual uh, segments here. Um, segment manual entry. So let's say that I want to put some comments in here. So let's go to our first um, segment here and I'm just going to comment in here first just so we can see it. And then I'll go to the third one and I'm just gonna type in a third. Now we, what we'll see is we'll see this in the output code. So we can put any comments in there. We could also put code in here. So if there's some specific code you wanted, maybe for a chip auger or something like that, or, or shower curtains or whatever you'd want there, you could put that code in there and it'll all put on that segment for you, which is kind of cool. And then if we had any, any options in here as far as these, codes go, I can tell it what to do first. So in this case here, I had a comment. So do I want the comment before the RPM or the RPM before the comment is kind of how that works. Um, other, other stuff here, if we do go in, we could say a full segment here, we will have a rapid down option here also. What that'll do is just add a rapid into this tool path for us uh, to save potentially a little bit of time if them segments are a little bit bigger. So here we have our tool path pretty much built out. Um, like I said, each one of these segments are going to be an individual set down here as we go. The first segment is the only one I wanna pack in this case for whatever reason. Um, and that's the only one that's gonna output, output a pack value. If that pack value works with the first pack, nominal pack or minimum pack. Um, other stuff here, like I said, all the parameters are essentially the same. Uh, tool axis control, this is just three axis. Um, nothing to really look at here that's, that's really important in this tool path, but potentially this top of stock value. Now that top of stock value here and here, if you're using stock, will be utilized here if we use this option. That's what that option really is for, is to make sure my drill gets all the way to the top of that stock. So that's the only time that would be used. Everything else in these parameters are exactly the same. You can also click on here to get to these different segments. It kind of gives you a visual aid of that segment there if you want to visualize it out. If I go ahead and green check, we're going to have our tool path here. And if I back plot this, we can go ahead and take a look at this. So there's my first drill tool path pecking and there it sneaks through the bottom second one all the way down through that air at a higher feed rate to save some time and then consequently we're just going to work straight down and back out now you'll notice down on the last segment that one my drill didn't pop all the way through because on the retract move i didn't tell it to use tip compensation if i wanted that i could always go back and edit these at any time and re-output it and then i would see my drill pop through if we go ahead and take a look at the output here, you're gonna notice that this is all longhand. So one thing about this toolpath is you're not going to get a can cycle. It's, it's not outputting that way. This is all longhand. So if we look at my code here, you're gonna see that my comments that I put in here are output, and then it's just all longhand code throughout this whole thing. So essentially it's building a longhand toolpath for you automatically. This also takes the place of a lot of our custom drill cycles that we used to build into your post, which is still available, but we, uh, we hope that you would go and try this first to see if this will take care of what you are trying to do. Now, a couple other things where this is useful is just not drilling. Um, if you've ever had a situation where you have a back chamfer tool where you have to stop the spindle and it springs in, go through the hole, start the spindle, and then back chamfer up, perfect for this. This is going to give you the ability to do all them weird kind of operations that were tricky before and automate them through the Mastercam system now. So I definitely hope you can go back and check that out. It's quite an interesting tool path to give you full say on all of these unique situations with drills or with some of them custom tools as I was stating with the back chamfer tools. 
So once again, check out our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.